Hello and welcome to a very special How I Paint Things. Now, I tend to find that one of the best parts about 40k is the ability to make stuff up. And whether that be on the tabletop or in a role-playing game like Death Watch or Wrath and Glory, then the freedom to just tell your own stories is part of the appeal for me. And that was certainly the case as well back in 2012, when my wife came up with one of the antagonists for our Death, Wa Th Death Watch campaign, and they were the Silver Stars. Now these marines are a prideful, or rather they were, a prideful and, in a short word, corrupt chapter, who were eventually destroyed by the Inquisition and the Sisters of Battle, but they never fell to chaos, and part of that comes from their inspiration. These guys were based on the idea of the Holy Roman Empire, and the depths and the heights to which people in positions of power can be generally trusted to mess things up if you leave them long enough <laughs> to, to pad the nest, as it were. So I'm going to drop a little bit in the description below if you want to know more about the Silver Stars, and I will be chatting as I go ahead painting, because I think on occasion it helps to just step back and paint something for fun. Um, I'm not going to do an army of these guys, I would be surprised if anybody else did, but on occasion, you know, just putting the paints on the table in front of you and having a laugh is what's important. So that's what I've done here today. If you do like how it looks, don't worry, all of the paints will be listed in the description below. So let's get started. Now I've started by giving this guy a primer of gunmetal spray from the army painter. Reason being, because he's going to be mostly silver, that will work fine. And same as if we were using a grey primer, uh, it'll work as a base coat for most of the other colours we're going to work with as well. Now you'll notice there is a little bit of blue visible in some places. This is what happens when you spray outside of ideal conditions. <laughs> it was a little too cold this morning. Doesn't matter too much because I've got that primer there for the paint to key on to on most of the areas, but I am going to paint you know, I'm going to put over the top of this some lead belcher in a second. So with my large base brush, I have some lead belcher. And we're just going to go over the whole miniature. Make sure they are working it into those still blue recesses. Uh, the large base brush is honestly one of the best brushes Citadel has ever done. The wedge tip, just brilliant. So I'm going to go around the whole miniature now. And yeah, basically finish off the priming. Now that doesn't take terribly long to do, and once it's settled we can move straight on to shading it. And for this I'm going to use Nuln Oil. Um, I want to use this because I want a smoky kind of gunmetal finish by the time we're done. So I'm just going to load up a brush and start applying this again over the whole model. I'm not particularly worried if it ends up on anything I'm going to paint a different colour later. Uh, that is probably way too much shade up around his head, so I'll shift that around while it's wet. Just make sure that you are getting it into your recesses, and then we'll leave this for about 20 to 30 minutes to dry. Now we've got our nice deep shading, but he does look a little bit flat. So I've got here one of my little makeup brushes I'm going to use as a dry brush here, and some Necron Compound. Now ordinarily I'm quite fussy about how much I take off before dry brushing, but with silver, and particularly the way we're going to do this, I'm not too fussed if I do end up with a little bit too much. What I really want to avoid is getting into the recesses. I do want quite a shiny finish. So let's try across this pack here. I'll lightly flick across the top. And yeah, we've got a nice shine there really quickly. So I am going to do this across the entire armor. All of the armor? The entire arm? You know, never mind. <laughs> uh, the whole thing is going to get some Necron Compound. Now after that dry brush, we've got our shine back, and that's looking pretty cool. There are one or two bits, particularly on larger flatter areas like his legs, where there's a little bit of graininess to that texture, but I actually kind of like that. I think that sells our heirloom armor look a little more than I might think. Now what stands out next is the fact that over the last almost 10 years, uh, we've discussed what the Silver Stars would look like, you know, they have silver armor, that's a given, but a dark blue was involved. And we've never really solidified precisely where the blue was, so let's make it up a little here. I've got some Cantor blue because I want a deep 
sort of midnight blue by the time I'm finished. So I'm going to pick uh, his shoulder pads are a good start for this. We'll do the inside field in Cantor blue and you'll see we are going to need to come back and give this a second coat. We've got some of that primer showing through but that's okay. Um, if he had a helmet on I'd probably do that blue as well and I'm going to do this top section of his power plant in blue. Now this is one of the things when I'm talking about painting for its own sake, you know, doing your own thing, just having some fun. In this case, there's no wrong answers. I'm really just painting what I think is going to look cool. So I don't have to worry too much about getting it right or wrong, you know, which is nice. Although a little nerve wracking when I think about the fact that these Marines have existed, well, at least in my wife's head for a good 10 years. <laughs> so I don't want to mess it up. Alright, now I've decided on his knee pad, his shoulder pads, and the back of his power plant. Those are going to be common to most marines. If I was going to do any Primaris Silver Stars, I would probably do the chest piece underneath the Aquila in blue as well, but there are no Primaris Silver Stars. Reason being, these guys were declared excommunicate traitorous and uh, gunned down by a combined Inquisition and Sisters of Battle task force, which took a little while. The Silver Stars being so deeply entrenched in the uh, system that they were. But, you know, don't mess with the Inquisition. So I've got now some Retributor armor, and I'm going to pick out the Chest Eagle. And, you know, there aren't a lot of other details on this fella that I want to be gold. So this probably won't take terribly long. Yeah, not a lot of gold. I've got here Rhinox Hide, and I'm going to paint in the leather details on him. And you might be wondering why were these guys all shot to bits and the short answer is they started setting themselves up as essentially feudal lords in the same way as the Habsburgs had these guys had made sure that their uh, lines were responsible for vast sections of the sector where they were uh, deployed so you had the silver stars themselves but then family members responsible for shipping and uh, there was the Archimandrite, a, a religious figure, you know, a saint, and uh, he unfortunately was also tied in with the long genetic history of the Silver Stars. And it reached the point at last that these guys, you know, if there is a defining characteristic of these Marines, it is the sin of pride. And they never turned to chaos. I always like to think that chaos never really held that much appeal to them. You know, the rewards that they could get by essentially tweaking the Imperium to their own goals and uh, you know, it was superior to what Chaos was going to offer. Uh, but after a time when you don't pay your tithes and you start throwing your weight around outside your little area, these little kings came to the attention of the Inquisition and the rest, and the Silver Stars themselves, were history. Now I'll switch to a little Mephiston Red and paint in the frogging on his chest. And yeah, one of the things I really like about the Silver Stars is that it is tempting to say, well, that's not how 40k works, which on the face of it, well, first of all, we can't point definitively to what actually happened 2000 years ago in our own history. So 10,000 years of history, <laughs> it can be a little more dizzying. But as well, the point of that's not how 40k works well, that's exactly why the Silver Stars got nobbled, because they weren't behaving. Anyhow, I'm just, I'm enjoying myself now, so let's finish this off. Now, before I get too far into painting the Marine, I'm going to base coat his face. And for this, I'm going to do a couple of coats of Cadian Flesh Tone. Um, I don't want to start from very dark, because I'm going to shade this, and uh, that'll make quite a difference. And I'm painting this now because it saves me when I want to paint his hair black later. You know, I can use it as a tidy up stage on his face. So let's just put one coat down. As you'll see, this is going to have to dry and then get a second over the top. Now this fella, he's carrying this crazy old school uh, pleasant pistol, which has clearly been handed down through his line, but he's carrying a bog standard chainsword. So it says to me that, you know, he might be descended from a mighty hero or someone who's 
very well regarded and has been allowed to keep that pistol. But with this chainsaw of his own deeds, there isn't much to write home about yet. And when it comes to painting areas of natural black, like the rubberized sections of his suit or his hair, I'm going to use Corvus Black instead, which is actually a very dark grey. Now this will dry darker than it looks going on, so don't worry if it looks a little light at first. Uh, anywhere that you want black that doesn't look you know, mechanical and hard, Corvus Black is going to be the easiest one here. And you see how much darker that dries than when it's going on? It looks almost black, but there's a little bit of difference between our hard mechanical black on the weapons, which I think looks quite cool. Now I've got a little bit of Corax white, and I'm going to use this to paint in the power, the ringy things on the plasma pistol. I'm doing this now because if I make a mistake, I can just go back with a little bit of black and tidy that up. But at the same time, I'm going to paint in this fella's knee pad in white, because I've got ideas about what I'm going to do with some decals in a little bit. Now we're actually getting near the end of our base coats. After doing the white, I went back to my Corvus Black and just blacked in the base. I'm going to dry brush that, we'll put a couple of shades on it later, but for now it just helps to add a bit of context to what we're doing. Now I'm going to paint in his purity seals, or any scroll work, and I'm going to use Rakarth Flesh first of all. And then for any wax seals, I'm going to use Screamer Pink. Now I quite like this because it's actually a fairly dark color, fairly rich, and it won't detract from any other red that you've got on the miniature. Uh, there isn't a correct color, of course, for purity seals, but this is what I like using. Now once we've finally got all of those base coats applied, it's time for some shades. And I'm going to start off with uh, some Gilliman Flesh, in actual fact. Now I've never used this directly over Cadian Flesh Tone, so I can't tell you how it's going to look. But it comes very highly recommended, and I figure, well, why not? You know, I'm having fun painting, it's time to have a bit of a play around. So let's just pop this... Oh... Okay. Uh, let's just pop this straight over his face. And we're going to use another contrast paint at this stage. I've got Ethermatic Blue, and I'm going to use this to paint the coils on his plasma pistol. Now, of course, same as with everything else, you can use whatever you like the look of here. I just like the blue glow of Ethermatic Blue. Very easy. Now, you might have thought I was going to paint a Space Marine without using any Agrax Earthshade, but no. <laughs> We're going to move on now. Uh, the gold, the red, and I'm also going to do a couple of little working bits of machinery with just a little bit of Agrax Earthshade to give them a little bit of different, uh, a slightly different tone rather. You don't need to go terribly overboard with this. Uh, same as with everything else, you know, the shades will darken slightly as they dry, so just a little bit there, and any other areas where I want that to stand out. Uh, same too, you know, the leather, the purity seals, away you go. And the final shade we'll apply is a little Null Oil again. And what I'm going to do is go for some of the blue spots. Just poke and be a little bit more targeted with how I'm applying this. So that I get a nice dark recess in some of these areas. Anywhere that I think I've put on a little too much, check this out. I will... Oh, it's gone. <laughs> Leaving just the recesses intact. Now while some of those shades are drying, we can go back and highlight a couple of other areas. So I'm going to go back to my Cadian Flesh Tone, because this, uh, what do you call it? This Gilliman Flesh dried a lot darker than I was expecting. So I'm going to highlight cheeks, brows, and what have you, with just a little bit of the original color. Now after going back over most of the face with Cadian Flesh Tone, I've got to admit, in the future, if I were looking to save time, I would probably base coat it with Wraith Bone, give it the Gilliman Flesh, and leave it at that. Uh, for highlighting and what have you, as I'm doing now, I think, honestly, sticking with just uh, Reckland Flesh Shade instead is the easier way to go. But eh, your results may vary. You might like to look at that. I've got a little bit of Kislev Flesh here, and now I'm going to do those final extreme highlight. Well, not extreme, but let's just pick out his nose, his brows, his chin, and give him a little bit more personality. 
So now I'm going to move on. I have a little bit of white. And let's, you know, I'm going to paint his teeth off camera because I cannot get the right angle both to show you what's happening and to do it. So fortunately, you'll just have to guess with that one. And at the same time, I've painted a quick highlight on his knee pad. And now I'm going to do the same. I have Calgar Blue. And I don't want very much on my brush for this. Let's get into the knee pad here. And we'll just... Oh, goodness me. The important thing here is... Oh dear, that's way too much. <laughs> uh, if you do end up putting on too much of a highlight, uh, what you can do is go straight back to the Cantor Blue and just tidy it up, which I might do in a second here, because I've got way too much blue where I did not want it. So yeah, back to my Cantor Blue, and I'll just ooh, lightly tidy that up. Now we're going to zip through some of the highlights a little quickly here. So I've got, first of all, Doom Bull Brown, and that's going to go over all of the leather. This is really useful if you've got a really dark brown that you want to use and have a nice red leather effect to it. A little bit of Storm Vermin Fur to highlight his hair. Just a little bit of Dawnstone to do any black details. And for this, the old edge of the brush trick is going to serve you well. Just a tiny wee bit of Liberator Gold, if you do want to highlight any of the gold bits. And we're going to go all the way up to Troll Slayer Orange to highlight our red. And this is one which, again, probably going to find less is more. A tiny wee bit of pink horror for the wax, or you could mix in some white to your screaming, screamer pink, goodness me, screaming, screamer, yelling, bloody blood secretor, what are some of these chaos names? And a tiny wee bit of ushabti bone for your parchments and what have you. Now with all of those highlights applied, I'm actually starting to apply some decals. And for this, I've turned to the Sisters of Battle sheet. Um, I've also got here an allied star, which I'm going to use to put up on his uh, shoulder pad. It's not the right star, but I want to put something up there anyway, and I can't hand, I can't hand paint this thing. Uh, so what I'm going to do is add a couple more decals. Think of Imperial Knights. You know, they carry their deeds and their history with them. The silver stars are much the same. There is a vanity to it. Uh, so this fella, for example, he might actually have a sister in the sisterhood, or he's just been given a campaign badge for fighting alongside the Order of the Bloody Rose at some point, and he's been allowed to keep that. Or he hasn't been allowed and he just hasn't taken it off. It's really much of a much. But I'm going to apply some more decals now. Now when it comes to getting a decal to adhere to a curved surface, like on the knee pad here, Microsole is your friend. Now I've done a video on that already, which I will link to uh, up in the top there, but my goodness, what a winner with that. Now what I'm going to do is go ahead, I'm going to just dry brush his base, pop a couple of shades on it, and then when that's dried, I'll take him outside, give him a matte varnish, and we'll get a look at what he looks like once the Silver Star is all finished. And there at last, our Silver Star is complete. Now, it's not really pushing the boat out far for this one. After all, Silver and Blue Space Marines, well, they're fairly common. And the simple answer for that is that they work. The real trick is making sure that they don't look like a can of Red Bull by the time you're finished. And I think I've got that one all right. Part of what makes this really fun is knowing the full context of this Space Marine. Everything on him tells part of his story. And I really like having the time to search through and come up with these little tidbits that tell us about that character. Now one of the best parts about 40k as a narrative setting is the fact that it is the absolute playground of the unreliable narrator. So you just do what you think looks cool. And if anyone tries to tell you otherwise, well, none of us have been around for the next 40,000 years, so I'm pretty sure we can make it up. So thank you very much to Exit23 Games for the light and sound equipment, as well as all of the patrons who are keeping me ticking in paints and glue, including my producers, Alan Nuttall, Kyrie Crawford, Trainboy, Fred, and Connor. Your support is invaluable. Any questions or anything, feel free to drop them in the old comments box below. 
My Twitter and Instagram are both linked there too. So thank you very much for your time and you all enjoy the rest of your day.